Welcome to this day six of the our online global self awakening retreat. The truth of who you are. Discover the truth of who you are. We're going to get into that one because that's a good one. So let's take a couple of moments, a few moments to center ourselves and just dive back inwards. And one of the easiest ways of meditating and diving inwards is simply to trace back your thoughts. To their origin. Where do your thoughts come from? We're always thinking about how to manipulate our thoughts so we're, pos we're thinking positively or um, it's about feeling good, quieting the mind, meditation, But we never really investigate to see where do the thoughts come from? Where do they originate? So if you trace your thoughts back into the source, let's see what happens. Let's just do it for a moment. Simply by observing trace back your thoughts <coughs> to their origin and see what happens Just gently trace back your thoughts and see where they come from. It's not a mental ex exercise. <clears throat> it's simply observing from a space, from a place of observation, witnessing. It's like you see a stream. Water is running down the stream and you decide to walk up the stream to see where it comes from. You're not trying to change the course of the stream you're not judging the course of it. You're not trying to block its flow of water. You're simply tracing the stream to its source. Where is it coming from? Where does it originate? It must be coming from somewhere. So you trace back your thoughts 
And then as you trace your thoughts back to their origin, something very interesting happens. If you simply just hang in there, be patient, have a few na deep breaths, and then suddenly you discover that it's very quiet. You arrive at an empty place. You come to silence. It gets very, very quiet. You dive back into your original state, space. You enter into the Hall of Truth. You enter into nothingness. And it's quiet. Now you can gently come back. See, it wasn't very difficult. It's not difficult because it's not a mental activity. It's not difficult because it's not an exercise. It's not something you do. We didn't do anything. It wasn't a doing. There is a big difference between when you're doing things or when you're simply aware of things happening. There's a big difference. And if you are to enter into a higher level of consciousness, you have to understand the difference. It's very important for you to understand this part. It makes a world of difference in your spiritual involvement. And that's where you separate yourself from the hurt. You separate yourself from majority of spiritual seekers and you enter into a deep space. Because majority of spiritual seekers they think they need to do something. 
But sometimes I give you exercises to do something, but that's not the goal. That's simply a path. The difference between doing something and simply being aware. Being aware doesn't require any kind of energy. Being aware comes from being here. So it's a natural space that is already within yourself. You simply become focused on it. Your attention comes to this part of that I am but I am not this, I am not that, I just am. And by claiming the truth of who you are, I am, awareness automatically takes over and you're aware. You're aware of movements, you're aware of things passing through your consciousness. Like when I ask you to be quiet, what does it take to be quiet? Do you know why being quiet, teaching someone to be quiet is not popular? Do you know why most of your teachers, they tell you to do this, to do that? to try to clear your past issues, do therapy, do some cleansing with your ancestral lineage, clean up things from your past lives, do a lot of mental exercises, heal the the, the child within yourself. Purify yourself. Do cleansing, penance, rituals. How many rituals have you gone to? Calling the shaman to come through working with different medicine men, doing ayahuasca, doing different ceremonies. How many times have you done that? And these things are very popular. They're attractive and a lot of people would like to spend money and put time doing it. So there is popularity in it because you're doing something. You are spending money and you're getting something in return. It's got value to it. It's attractive. The teachings about being a co-creator with God to manifest a better world to co-create with God, to learn how to do positive visualization, positive words, say the right things so you manifest things. They're very attractive. How to materialize and manifest your soulmate different courses continuously to manifesting soulmate, to manifesting money, manifesting a better life. These are very attractive concepts. They're marketing concepts that is very attractive to the spiritual seeker. And it's 
easily you go spend money on it. But who wants to spend money on a message that talks about being silent? Be quiet. <laughs> it's got no marketing value. Everyone can tell you that. Be quiet. Don't think. But how can you make money from that? It's got no marketing value. It's worthless when it comes to marketing it. It's not attractive. <coughs> Do you get this a little bit? Yes? No? Are you with me? Are you there? Does it make any sense to you? What do you have to do to be silent? What do you have to do to be quiet? Do you have to spend money on it? Do you need to travel from here to India to be quiet? Do you have to change your dr diet Da drastically force yourself to be vegetarian in order to be quiet do you have to change your looks I am going to shave my head and put on mala and wear an orange rope in order so I can be quiet I need to move out of Los Angeles and go to the desert in order to be quiet. So it requires me doing something. I need to stop my glass of wine that I'm used to having a glass of wine every night in order to be quiet. I need to give up my cigarette smoking habit to be quiet. I need to go lose weight to be quiet. What do you have to do to be quiet? What does it require of you? Nothing. There's nothing you need to do to be quiet. And zero money you spend to be quiet. Hasn't this been the message all this time? Continuously constantly, repeatedly, be quiet, be silent. That's why from marketing stand, standpoint, it's foolish, it's stupid for any teacher to teach that when it has no marketing value. It doesn't bring any anything. You can't make a living from teaching being quiet. You may not wonder why so few in the world have chosen to teach it and so many teach the opposite. It's simply because it has no marketing value.
Nobody gets wealthy, rich, famous, powerful from teaching to be quiet. Because it's not a product. It's your natural state of being. I mean, you need to plug in also the plug to it so it doesn't die out later. You can't bottle it and sell it in a bottle or in a can. It's not a t-shirt you can sell. It's not a crystal that I can sell it to you that is going to raise your vibrations and it's going to this crystal, this pendant is going to protect you from evil eyes. That sounds great. I'll pay $300 for that. Oh, wear this pendant and this pendant is, it comes from Abajania, it comes from Brazil, it comes from blah blah blah. Okay, I pay a thousand dollars for it. Why would you spend any money on being silent, on being quiet? Think about it. I want you to contemplate. Take the next one moment. We'll be silent and contemplate for it. What part of it is attractive? Where is the value in it? Who is crazy enough to come and market something which is free and it's readily accessible to everybody at any moment? Why would anyone to be crazy to do that? He's definitely not a businessman. Only a fool would do such a thing like that. You can't have any sense of business to do something like this. Less alone to make a living out of it. Take your time and do some research. Look into different teachings. Browse through internet and check things out. And you'll discover for yourself that barely, very little number of teachers would teach such a thing. Because it's really not marketable. It has no mark marketability, any values because it's free. You can do it at any moment, any time, anywhere, without making any kind of changes. All you have to do is simply be quiet. Yet, something that has zero value as far as marketing and 99% of the spiritual seekers in the world are after doing something they need they want to do something yet comes this teaching telling you 
you do not to do anything. You do not need to do anything. You simply be quiet and be aware. And in that, you discover the truth of who you are. You will discover the presence which is within yourself. The presence which is surrounding you. You're breathing it. You're living in it. Every moment of your life. Silence. And emptiness. Pure space. Is the truth of who you are. Presence is the only thing which is, we can call it awareness, which is the only thing that there is. Emptiness, nothingness, is another word for it, is the only thing that there is. Silence is the only thing that there is. Different words pointing out. These are words pointing out to this. Now, I'm going to explain this a little bit deeper so you understand it better. Okay? Can I speak non-stop without a moment of stopping, of breathing? Can I not breathe and just speak for two hours? Not even take a breath. Because to breathe, I have to stop speaking. I can speak and breathe simultaneously. They don't work together. Even if you're going very fast, very quickly, and you're talking continuously, there's a moment that even in a split second you have to catch your breath. No one can just talk continuously for two hours and not take a breath. It's impossible. You're welcome to try it. And see how long that lasts. But what happens in between, as I am speaking, there is gaps of silence in between my conversation with you. So the words are appearing into empty space. Because when I stop, What's there? Anybody? When I stop, there is nothing. It's empty in between. It's gaps of silence. It's gaps of emptiness. In between the chatter, every time I stop, the background like the background here, you look at the background behind me, it's black, correct? The reason you can see the white shirt is because it's got a background of black behind it. If everything was black, I was wearing black, 
I had painted my face black. I had painted my hair black. My chair I'm sitting on was black. Then you wouldn't be able to to see me and distinguish me through the camera. The only reason you can see me visually is because there's a contrast. But but the background is black, it's dark. So your background of who you are is already silence. Silence is who you are. You just don't know it because no one ever bothered to investigate it. Nobody ever took their time to just check it out. A few people like Rumi, Latsu, Buddha, Christ, Kabir, Ramana Maharishi, Christ, a few people, they investigated and they discovered it that the very background of our existence is silence. It's nothingness. It's simply the being but not being this or not being that. Silence is not this or that. Silence is silence. There's no different kind of silence. It doesn't come in different packages, colors, types. Silence is silence. So when you recognize the background of who you are, everything else appears and travel through it, through it. But silence is always here. It doesn't matter where you live. You can be in New York City or in Jakarta or in Mumbai, places that is always busy. There's always traffic. There's always people. There's the sirens of the fire trucks, the police cars. There's helicopter flying, hovering above your head. There's people screaming, talking, arguing, commerce, but even the most busy city in the world, there are moments that everything becomes quiet. There's no noise. The noise cannot be constant. The noise comes and goes. Silence is constant. Silence is always here. Other stuff appear on silence and they disappear. But they can't touch silence. They can only cover silence when they're here, but then they disappear back into silence. You're starting to get a little bit glimpse of what I'm talking about, I can tell. And this, if you understand what I say, it would be the turning point in your spiritual path. If you get it, if you really get it, 
your life will change as of this very moment. And it will change either in a subtle way or a drastic way. But never again you can go back. Have you ever been in a palace? Have you ever been in a castle? Have you ever been in a symphony? A big old hall from 100 years ago, 200 years ago? Or an old church? Those of you who are in Europe, you have a lot of buildings like that. Those of us here in the West, the Western part of the United States, we don't have as many buildings like you do. If we go to the East Coast, we do, there's more, but if you go to the Old World, Europe, you go to Asia, Middle East, Eastern Hemisphere, there's many, many buildings that they're from 500 years ago, 400 years ago, 1,000 years ago. They haven't been destroyed through the bombing, through the war. They're still there. So let's say you go in, in a s symphony hall. And before they have the performance, you go there a day before and it's an empty place. There's nothing. Chairs, curtains, furniture. There's no performance. There are no people. And then you go for the performance and you go sit there and you see these beautiful musicians come and they set up and they have this great symphony and there's this great music and you're listening to this beautiful expression, this music. And then after the symphony is over, everybody leaves, go back there in a day or two, what's left in there in the hall? You go back to the same hall and it's empty space. Where is all that activity? Let's say you go to the Palace of Versailles or you go to a cathedral, Notre Dame or famous place many, many people go to. And you go into this palace so many different kings and queens live there. So many celebrations taken place. So many different events have happened in it. And now when you go there, there is nobody there. What happened to all that events that happened in the space? Or I use modern world, modern time era. Let's go, you, you go to a festival somewhere in your town. You go to a festival near your town, in your town, out of town. And there is like 10,000 people, 5,000 people in a the festival. There's music, there's barbecuing, there's dance, there's bands, there's entertainment. And then few days after the festival is over and everybody goes and you go back to the same space 
whereas there's no remnants of that music, of that festival, of that festivity. It's just space left. Nothing else. So you go to this castle that so many parties and dances and events and dramas happen in it. Kings and queens, they made decisions. They executed people. They decided on war. They decided on marriages. All kinds of things happen. But now when you walk into the same building, there's nothing. There's empty space. There's absolutely no evidence of anything else. It's like you wrote something on a flat surface of, an, of a lake. It's clear. Or at the pool. You go to a pool and you write something. You use your finger or you take a stick and you write something on the water. And in a, as you're writing it, it starts to disappear. And what's left? There's the water. Water is left. It's flat. Same thing. You have gone to all these different events. All these historical events have happened. In Taj Mahal, you heard of Taj Mahal in Agra in India. How many people have heard of Taj Mahal? Yeah. How many people have been in Taj Mahal? And you go there and... Because when you go into these cathedrals, these old buildings, and they have history and they, you've had so many different emperors, kings, queens, warriors, leaders of armies, scientists, politicians, magicians, physicists, chemists, Alchemists have been there, lived there. But then you enter into this space and none of them are there. But the space remains the space. The space hasn't changed. It's still an empty space. And it doesn't require any doing. You don't need to preserve it. You don't need to do anything to it. It doesn't need anything. And that's silence. It's always here, but it doesn't require any kind of maintenance. It doesn't require any kind of it, any anything. You don't have to do anything because at the end of the day, when your mind finally slows down and shuts down, what starts to trans transpire? It's silence that reveals itself. Do you understand what I'm saying? Are you with me? Are you here? I want to make sure you're here and you're not getting hypnotized or not going to deep meditation or falling asleep with me. I need your attention because this is important. This is the turning point between your awakening or remaining a robot. You are, by birth, that space. That's who you really are. This other one that you think you are is only an appearance that appears in this empty space. And it's got a duration. Whatever age you are, you're 30 years old or you're 80 years old. 
you have an appearance. After that, your appearance is going to disappear. It appears and it disappears. It's like a wave. A wave comes no matter how big and bad and scary it may appear. You know, it's 30 meter wave. Oh my God, we're in Hawaii. It's a 30 meter wave appears it looks monstrous you don't want to be around that or under it or come close to it because it's going to crush you but what happens after it falls down where does it go this big bad mean looking wave where is it coming from and where is it going back to it comes from the ocean, it is the ocean, and it goes back into the ocean. So then the next day you go to the same place, same, same beach, and everything is calm. There's nothing going on. Where is the wave? Where is the boogeyman? Where is that scary monster? It goes back to where it came from. Same thing. The appearance of your body appears into empty space. It's got a duration and then it goes back to its own source. Like a wave appeared and then it goes back. It has the appearance has no substance of itself. Just like your body, it appears into emptiness, it comes from silence, and then it just returns back into silence. But silence remains the same. Silence doesn't come and doesn't go, because that's the background. There is the black background here, or back here, behind me. It's a black background. I just happen to come in front of it. And then if I go, I'm not, what do you see? You see the black background. The black background is always there. And now maybe I go this direction. Don't worry about where this thing goes. Your attention is on this. Your attention is absolutely on the wrong place. So you need to wake up and bring your attention on the real thing. That which doesn't come and doesn't go. That which is always here. Comprende? You understand what I'm saying? Now you may get a little bit idea of the challenge I go through. You may get an idea of sometimes the frustration I have to deal with. You may get an idea, that's why this is not marketable. It's not a product I can sell and make a living from it. And that's why nobody wants to teach it. Because it has no marketing value. It's simply empty space. Who wants to spend money on empty space? Hey, come and give me $5,000. I'm going to give you nothingness. Of course you're not attracted to it. You want to go do a course that you're going to get something for it. Whether it's an ayahuasca journey or if it's a Peruvian shaman journey or if it's a Tony Robbins 
uh, journey of meeting with the destiny and learning how to manifest this or manifest that or whatever that is, whatever that you want, because it's something. It gives you something in return. Here, there is nothing I can give you because there's nothing to give you. Do you see the challenge now? Your thoughts, your mind appears an empty space. They just an appearance that they're traveling through empty space. You are that empty space. That's who you are. It's nothing. It's nothingness. That's what Buddha said 2,000 years ago. Go back to the text, to the very original teachings of the Buddha. And the Buddhist, it says, speaks of nothingness. Later on, it became a religion and it became dogmatic. But when Buddha was alive, his teaching was alive too. It happened in the moment. After the teacher dies, the master dies, the teaching becomes dogmatic. Same thing, when Christ was alive, Christianity did not exist. The teachings were alive, they were spontaneous. The teachings were coming from silence. There was no agenda behind the teachings. Later on, it became dogmatic. But when the Master is alive, everything is fresh. Everything is unexpected. Everything is unpredictable. I was going to talk about something else today. I prepared myself, I took my notes, and I was going to talk about a different subject. But when I came and sat here and opened my mouth, something came out of my, something different came out of my mouth. <laughs> because I'm not predictable. Because you can't figure me out. Because I don't have a set way to go. I may do one thing a thousand times, but one day I may do exactly the opposite of that thing. Because silence Emptiness is in the background and other things appear on it and you can predict this because it's alive and life, anyone who lives truly and is alive and operates from silence cannot be predicted as you can predict life. Many have tried to predict life, but they all failed because they don't understand emptiness. They were trying to be scientific about it to discover patterns and they invested on that. But their path, their way, is different because they don't understand. Everything comes from silence. First, you have to understand your true nature. Then, 
try to figure out a way how to manipulate it But if you do understand your true nature, truly, then that desire for manipulating it will disappear. Because a new joy will come to your life. You will experience life in a way that you've never experienced it. You will find a joy in your life that it's never been there. You only heard about it, but you never experienced it. You will discover things that you're capable to do that has nothing to do with the power of your will and the products that they are being selling to you. To will your way to this or will your way to that and manipulate this and manipulate that. You will discover that the nothingness and silence is far beyond your personal free will to manifest something. You have tapped into something beyond imagination. You didn't even know it exists. Because it's the truth of who you are. It's because it's your very background. It's because it's your foundation. But you don't know your foundation because you never investigated that. And you have to do it because your time has come. This is your time now. And this is your opportunity. And you can be sleepy. You cannot fall asleep. Because if you fall asleep this time, it may cost you a thousand other lives. You may have to come back many, many more times to have an opportunity like this again. It's very unique, so sharpen up and buckle up and be alert and pay attention. Because you're on the edge of an incredible discovery of the truth of who you are. And you can't afford missing this one for something silly. The silly stuff are always here. You can always do that. But this, you cannot. Silence is your true nature. That's why you are so much struggling to get back to it. That's why you take medications. That's why you numb yourself. That's why you drink. You smoke, you eat sugar, you have sex, you buy cars, homes, you accumulate more things, you're hanging on your stuff because you want peace. You want peace and peace only comes from silence, but you're not aware of that. You think it's in something. It's in somewhere or it's in somebody. Somebody, your saint, your priest, the people you worship, they can give it to you.
You don't know it's inside yourself because you never looked. No one ever told you that. Because there's no marketing value in it. Who's going to get rich by telling you that? Your deep attraction to peace is because it's silent and it's quiet. All this nagging, all these desires, all this stuff that, oh, I really need to be with somebody in this life and I don't have my soulmate or I'm damaged and I've been wronged and da 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 and blah 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 da 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 da. If you go beyond these things, you fall back into ultimate peace. You tap into the ultimate love. You tap into something far, far, far beyond the nagging of your mind. And the little joy that you get from emotions when things go your way and the little satisfaction you get from it this is beyond all of it. You can't give that up for a little instant gratification that you get. You can't be that ignorant. Not at this point. You got to go for it. It's in front of you. It requires you to take one more jump, one more step. You're on the edges of it. We have been together for six days. You're feeling it. You're feeling it. You've been in ecstasy. You've been in this place of something has happened. Something has touched you. Something has changed you. There is an ecstasy, there is a bliss, there is something that is of value that you're feeling it in this moment in your heart. I know you're feeling it. I know it. Take the last step. Don't deviate from it. What do you have to lose that you're not going to lose anyway? Take the final jump. Dive into silence. And then you will see that your mind your thoughts, your story of your past, everything was designed, all your emotional damages or whatever, traumas, they were all designed to bring you to this point. And none of them really happened to you. It happened to an imaginary character that you thought it was you. It was never you. Because you are silence. And you can't damage silence. It's always here. Everything comes from silence. Everything goes back to silence. Look at what's going on right now. They're forcing you to wear a mask. It can't be any more symbolic than that. It means be quiet. Be silent. What happens when the baby's born? It starts with a cry. And what happens 
Where was it before? It comes from silence. It was quiet. And then what happens after you die? They either burn you or put you under the ground, but it goes back into silence. And any time in your life that you've been happy is because your mind was silent. Recognize that. It's in front of you. Embrace it. Bring your attention to it. And you see you're instantly free. You will see that you've never suffered. And you would never ever suffer, no matter what happens. Suffering will end in your life. Because everything else is a noise. Recognize silence and you will see your complaints are just noises. That's what they are, noises in your head. A dual personality, two people in your head talking to each other. You should have not done this. Well, but I did. You idiot. Why did you go and invest your money? Da, 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 da. Well, because da, 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 da. when you do something, before you do it, this, this one is telling you, you should be doing this, you should be doing that. You da, 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 da. You're lonely, you don't have a man, you don't have a lover, you don't... La, 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 la. Then you go to do things according to this one and it fails. And then what do you do? The same voice starts telling you, you're so stupid, you're an idiot, you never learn, you always make the same mistake. Who tells you that you're ugly? Who tells you that you're not good enough? Who tells you that you're fat? Who tells you that you're short? Who tells you that you're not smart? Maybe when you were five, six, seven, eight years old, your dad, your mom, your peers told you that. But who's telling you these things at your age now? It's this voice you're hearing it. And you buy it. You have to be smarter than that. Because you are smarter than that. You can't buy this thing. This thing appears on silence and goes back into silence. It's not real. You're investing on the wrong place, my brothers and sisters. And it doesn't matter how long you have invested you need to stop. Stop your investment. Shift your attention to the background, which is silence. And then discover the truth of who you are. Because there, there is no questions of why am I here? What happens to me after I die? Where was I before I came here? What's going to happen to planet Earth after I die? What happens to my children? Are they going to be secure or not? What happens to the world? Because when you die back into silence, there is no questions. And there is nobody there concerned with the questions. And consequently, there are no answers either. It's only peace. It's only love. It's only bliss. Which is your true nature untainted.
Any questions? Oh, there's something in our chat box. <laughs> Do you have any questions or comments or you can wave at me? Or you can write on the chat box. We've opened both the chat box and also you can unmute yourself if you want to talk to me. Recognize the space. Recognize the emptiness. When I say emptiness, people think, I used to think the same way, nothingness, emptiness. Buddhism, they're talking about nothingness, emptiness. But then you think of a dull, boring place. But that's not how it is. It's a point of reference. Entering anyone who discovered themselves, anyone, any person who came to awakening and they recognized the emptiness, the silence within themselves, they also discovered the joy of life. Their life changed. It's not that you're going to awaken to the truth of who you are and then from then on life is dull and you're like, um, I'm living here. It's not that. You tap into something you have no idea that it exists. There's so much light, there's so much love, there's so much inspiration, there's so much joy. But then you realize that l your life starts from that moment on. It's juicy, it's alive. Yet its source is in silence. You operate from silence. You speak from silence. You dance from silence. You make love from silence. You fight from silence. And its quality is unbelievable. It's just like a 1960 television that you're watching TV on a 1950, 1940, you know, it's got all these white stuff, fuzzy things on it. Lines go up, you know, versus a modern TV, an HD big screen TV. You literally find yourself in the movie. Major difference in quality. It's the same thing and better. Okay, I have some questions here. Okay, can you explain how to live in the emptiness and silence? Let's see. Miss Amy, you want to ask me this question in person? Are you good with that? So yes. everyone can hear it. Um, so I was just, you know, going into the silence, into the emptiness, and then we're also living in this 3D world, like that's where we are. And to get to the source, we need to, like how do we, what is a good balance, or how do we get uh, into a balance of going within ourselves to connecting into the silence, then still operating in a 3D world. Right. Everything starts to happen automatically. 
everything happens begin to happen from no mind without any interruptions any fears and worries and anxieties of the mind you're simply doing starts to happen it's like you're an artist and when you're creating your jewelry and you're making your jewelry and you lose yourself in it and three hours go by and in this three hours you've been making all this beautiful art who's doing it how does that happen how does this beautiful art being created it just comes out you're not really thinking about it it just starts to appear yet your body was involved in it in making it but the product comes out and you're looking at it and you're wondering how the hell did that happen I'm unmuting you. I'm going to unmute you. Sorry, I was a little loud in that. Yeah, no, no problem. So, you can you relate to this? Did you hear what I said? Yeah, it, um, it's when when you're when you're making your art, you're making your jewelry. How much an effort is it for you? no effort and so three hours may go by and it was like you don't even know three hours went by and all of a sudden this amazing jewelry this product is produced but it was effortless because you weren't doing it from the mind it comes from no mind the same thing in our regular life with everything else you're operating from this place you recognize silence as the background of who you are you recognize yourself as the background not as what appears to be it's that recognition of who you are then everything else starts to flow out of it without any interruption and it just falls into places perfectly more more than ever before because it's not the mind doing it it's coming from emptiness By, by recognizing who you are you recognize like every moment I stop as I'm talking right I'm speaking right now and then I stop and then I speak so what's behind it what is the background like when you're writing things what's the background of your writing you're writing on a piece of paper Can I have that book, please? Thank you. Here is Lightning Notes of Zarathustra. Let's say we go here. Let's see. Okay, here is the writings. What's in the back? It's empty space. You're writing on the empty space, correct? 
but the background is just empty space. Like here, there's nothing written here. It's empty. There's nothing, right? So this is who you are. This is who we are, and then things appear on you. But you think you're these things when you're this. When you're this, then things starts to appear on you. Always. And disappear. Ideas come and they manifest, or ideas come and they just go away. But you remain yourself. So you're not the idea. You're the background that an idea appeared on you. So you remember who you are. Your attention is on who you really are. Then things starts to appear on it. But it's not you. It's not personal. It's impersonal. You remain your position. You're remaining in this place. You're remaining as silence. You recognize silence. So every time your mind's not busy, you are back to who you really are, which is bliss. The more you recognize that, the more things starts to you see that there is a magic taking over. You see something is starting. You start to see these invisible hands that they're behind you. So you're walking in this direction. These hands are opening up in front of you. They're opening the pathway. You think you're going in this pathway, but these hands from behind you are opening it for you. And then everything just happens. It becomes effortless. There's an appearance of effort, but it's really effortless. It just happens. Is that when things begin to feel like synchronistic? Because you're in that flow. Including if things don't go your way. Things are synchronistics, but not necessarily going your way. So all of it becomes perfect. And then you just become like water. When you pour water on a hill, how does the water go down? Does water go straight down or it just goes around things? The water chooses the path of least resistance. The water chooses the path of least resistance when it's on a hill. Wherever is least resistance, where the water goes around it and goes through. Same thing with the life. You're getting empty, you're falling into silence, you're recognizing who you are, you're recognizing you're the background, then in that shift, all of a sudden you begin to literally see the flow of life. It's flowing. And then you just see how things come together, how it's flowing through. And yeah, sometimes you hit resistance, means something didn't go according to what you think it should, and then you find a way around it. So nothing becomes resistant, because you have complete flexibility of going around everything or climbing over it, so there is no obstacle anymore. The obstacle was you. But now you're ultra, ultra flexible, so you just stretch around everything that you come across because you are the flow. 
because there is no thinking, it just happens. Just like how this lecture today happened. I had no clue I'm going to talk about what I talked about. And I had no plans to talk about this. I had already done my homework last night and I had my notes to talk about something else. I come and sit here and my mouth opens up and talks about emptiness and silence. And I talk for an hour and a half without even thinking. It just brrrr comes out. How the hell did that happen? It just happens. All you have to do is, I understand this thing says, okay, I need to maintain my silence while I'm operating in a third dimension. It's, I understand what you're saying, but you just keep your attention on who you are. Everything else happens automatically. It all reveals itself to you. It all appears to you. It all opens up and represents, it presents itself to you. You don't do it. Anybody else? Anything else? I hope I satisfied. I hope I answered your question. That was a good one. I'm glad you asked me that. Look, let me tell you another thing is that doesn't mean there is this misconception that if you have awakened or if you have realized and you have come to, you have found inner silence, you have found this place that you never have thoughts of doubts, you never have thoughts of frustration. Those are human qualities, they still happen. You're not in control of your thoughts. You're not in control of any, any kind of thought forms. Let, okay, let's say I'm pure space. Being pure space is like being pure sky. The sky doesn't say, come and say that, you know what? I am blue sky and I'm excluding anything that flies through me. So birds cannot fly in the sky anymore. I'm the master. I'm the sky and nothing can fly through me anymore. Well, birds are going to fly in the sky, but what can I do? What could they do to the sky? And as they're flying, some of them shed, and the shed falls down and f goes back to the earth. But does it leave a mark on the sky? Airplanes constantly fly in the sky, and they leave marks. Some of them, what do you call it? I forgot the name I lost for chem, chemtrails, right? So what happened to the sky? You keep leaving chemtrails in the sky, but five days, ten days after when the wind comes and then you look up and the sky is blue. The sky never, it was never touched. And those of you who live in Europe or east coast of the U.S. and you live in places with cold climates and rain and snow and blizzards, how many, how many seasons have you seen bad weather? How many, maybe for, one time I was in Norway, I didn't see the sun for 29 days. For 29 days, I didn't see the sunshine. It was cloudy every single day, or raining, or snowing, or whatever. But after all the clouds go away, when you look at the sky, the sky is blue. 
The sky doesn't tell you, I am not going to be blue anymore because it's been snowing and raining and thunders and blizzards been happening and my feelings are hurt and I'm going to be light blue from now on. I'm going to have some scars on me. I'm going to be semi-pink because I'm damaged. I have emotional traumas from childhood and I'm not going to be blue anymore. The sky doesn't give a shit what happened. Si three months of bad weather or six months of bad weather or nine months of bad weather. At the end of the day, when all the clouds go, the sky is still the sky and it's blue, same way it was blue before. It's the same blue as if you go to Egypt, it's the same blue as if you go to North Pole. It's all the same blue. So silence, if you recognize yourself, if you turn your attention inwards towards yourself, it's always silence. It's always quiet. It's always here. And it's always untouched. And if you recognize that as who you are, if you bring your attention on it, then anything that appears will disappear and you are not that thing because now you realize what you are. You're untouchable. It's immortal. It's always been here. It will always be here. And because of that, recognizing that, recognizing who you are, then you're the silence, you're still, you're here, it's unchanging. In that recognition, you're no longer affiliating that you're your mind. So by that shift, all of a sudden, your action, your speech, your thoughts coming from silence, not from mind, not from chaos. And something has shifted. Something has turned around. Because then everything you say, everything you do, and everything you think becomes pure and holy. Because it's coming from the source. It's not coming from the mind, it's coming from the source, it's coming from emptiness. So then you see the magic of life, of how things synchronize. Because you're not attached any longer to any kind of results, you're just secure in where you're at. And then life starts to present things to you. and things starts to happen. But you have no attachments to any of it because your attention on that which that doesn't change. Not that which comes and goes. So you're detached from results. So existence starts presenting things to you. And you operate from clarity. It's when you're clear you're awake, your eyes are open, your ears are open, your mind is clear, then you see the pathway in your life. Which direction do I need to go? But when you're asleep and you're dizzy and you're drugged, as most people on this planet are, they're either on a lot of sugar or craft caffeine or drugs or alcohol or 
all kinds of prescription medications, diet medications. You're not clear. You can't be clear. You can't tune in to yourself. You don't hear your higher self. You don't hear the wisdom speaking because you're too busy with the phone, you're too busy with Instagram, you're too busy in with Donald Trump, you're too busy with the news of the world. You're just dizzy. You're not awake. Someone needs to come and shake you up. Well, as you wake up to who you are, then you're not concerned so much with your thoughts, you're not concerned with your emotions, you're not so invested on worshipping a body that is only here for a few days. You're clear. You're not focused on what's happening in the world that doesn't even exist or it's not important. Your attention is coming to the truth of who you are. You're not drinking the real orange juice. You're drinking the juice, not the poison that you've been drinking all of your life. Now clarity appears. Now you can see the way which you couldn't see before because your judgment was clouded. I have no other way to explain this to you. You have to come this way to see it for yourself. I can't tell you what awakening is and what is it like to operate from a place of silence unless you give it a try. I can sit down here and have conversations forever, but I don't want to have conversations with your intellectual mind because it ain't going to get it. You got to come on this side. You got to give it a try. And I know you are trying. I know that. You're trying. And as you are trying, you're starting to get a glimpse of the juice. You're touching it. Wow. I don't know. Zaratustra, so it's been really amazing this six days. It's just, I feel so good. Yes, because I'm constantly pushing you, forcing you to bring your attention inwards towards yourself, towards silence towards emptiness. To look at yourself, to see who you are. And we got three more days to go, so don't worry. <laughs> by the by the way, Amy, you have a very nice background behind you. That cosmic, the cosmos, yeah, it's it's a great one. I like it. Well done. Maybe we should do something like this, Amir. Check that one out. You see this one. <laughs> yeah, you could put your name up here. Oh, put your name there. You can get your name, Zaratustra. Oh, I, I actually have one that we made long time ago for going to the first expo I went to uh, back in the day with my name on it. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, you just take a photo of it and then upload it. 
I don't know. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for the suggestion. Sorry. <laughs> Pragya, you nice seeing you. And you got a nice background back there too. It reminds me of the Osho days. Of, <laughs> it's actually not about that, but uh, right. Also, like Amy said, a picture I liked very much, and I loaded it up. It's so, oh, it is. It's very soothing. Both 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 backgrounds are very soothing. So it's it's fabric or it's a painting or what is it? No, no, it's a photo. So you can load it down in in Zoom as background, and then you can choose it. We can upload photos as a background on Zoom. I didn't know we can do that. Yeah, every I was <laughs> every day, I'm learning something. It's a new option. Okay, good. And I didn't know you can see each other. Before, I was told you could only see five people at a time on the Zoom. But now I can see, we all can see each other. So, I thought I can only see you. What a beautiful time we've had so far. It's been amazing. I've been enjoying every moment of our time together. So precious, so beautiful, so rich, so colorful, so much love. Okay, so we're getting close to the end of our event. Amir always asks me to make my announcements because I keep forgetting and I need someone to remind me. So thank you, Amir. Appreciate it. Um, November 13th to 15th, I'm offering the Self-Awakening Mastery Workshop. It's three days and four hours a day. And that workshop is designed to help you raise your vibrations to a higher frequency. That means ways for those of you who have a hard time 
to quiet your mind and and drop into no mind so we emphasize with active meditations and learning ways of how quickly we can go into this place as well as the teachings and other things that we talk about the way of self mastery how to awaken to this part of us which is already here is already within you what we do is creating the environment for it to to because the seed is there the buddha is already within you silence is already in you all around you but for the spiritual warrior after a life long of struggles of going through childhood being abandoned being heartbroken being lied to being betrayed or betray emotional traumas sexual traumas physical traumas these are stages that we had to go through it was a part of our karmic path it was a part of the deal our schooling but now we have gone through those and we have arrived at this place and it's like you needed it to get to here but it's no longer applicable it's no longer helping you so now how can we go on from there on this journey to the light without these stuff that we're carrying with us all these blockages all these garbage bags all these stuff that we carry so we need to learn how we can get rid of them quickly definitely not therapy so now then you can open your wings because they're tying up your wings to fly so there has to be a system there has to be a way that we can uncondition unclutch from these old patterns and the way to do it is discovering ways of raising your vibrations to a higher frequency by recognizing that these stuff they're also stored in the cellular memory of you and if we can't replace it get rid of it no matter how much therapy we do it's always there so as we work on this to get rid of it we're cultivating the seed of the master we're nurturing that which is you're doing it right now you're at this phase in your life that you're nurturing the seed but it's very important to create the right environment for you the environment is very important when you're trying to awaken especially close to the last stages of awakening you have to be in a very protected environment that it's con conducing into your growth that it's supporting your growth that's not distracting you or poisoning your growth just like when they they create greenhouses the temperature has to be right humidity humidity has to be right the plants they need nurturing nourishment right fertilizers not overdoing it not underdoing it so they can come to their full potential and this is what we're going to be doing at the self awakening mastery
creating the environment so this can grow, this can blossom, this can come out because it's close, it's ready. But if we take this plant with this seed and take it to Siberia or take it somewhere that the temperature drops to 15 degrees below, it's immediately destroyed. That's why I emphasize so much repeatedly asking you to disconnect yourself from the world, from the news, from the poison, because it's poisoning your mind, it's activa activating your mind. That's why it's important that you take time to be by yourself, go to the nature, Keep the company of the wise by coming to communities like this that is supporting your spiritual growth. Its, it's intention is on that. By being with people who are supporting your movement. They're supporting your work. They're not distracting you. Meditation. Take time and be quiet. The sadvic ways or with your food. All of these things are important. You're bringing awareness in different parts of your life. You're breaking habits and patterns that are not helping you and supporting you. Again, I'm not dogmatic about things, you know that. But all of these areas are important. Not drinking too much alcohol or not using too much drugs or not eating really bad food paying attention so the body is clear, the mind is clear. So you can continue supporting your work because we're close. We didn't come all the way to this point to drop the ball when we're very close. the right teachings, the right teacher, the right practice. Because as you get closer, things get a lot more sensitive. Sensitivity comes. You can, you know it. You're very sensitive to a lot of things. You're sensitive when you go to crowds. You're sensitive when the music is off and loud. You're sensitive to the energies. You're awakening. That's why you're sensitive. That's, that's a good sign. Your sensitivity, awakening to sensitivity, is an indication that you're on the right path and you're very close. But you have to create and protect your, the cause and create the right environment. And we're going to talk about that in Self-Awakening Mastery. And I'll share with you what needs to be done. What do you have to do? Because it's a smaller group and I have time and I can talk to you and give you attention and listen to what you have to say. What are you struggling with? So we can help you. And a big part of it is commitment, committing to, to the path. But commitment is only one part of it, my brothers and sisters. Commitment is one part consistently, con being consistent and steady is another part. 
because commitment by itself cannot succeed if you're not consistent because you're gonna get you're gonna hit bumps on your way that's a part of the journey so you get bumped out fine jump back on the horse and keep going you don't don't get discouraged well I felt you know I, I got distracted and you know I got back into my drinking habits it's okay come back again get back on the path that's fine oh I got distracted with this man or whatever or somebody passed away or something happened it's okay come back just keep keep going keep doing keep be quiet be silent oh I lost it the other day I reacted to this person and I got in a fight over a parking spot because they took my parking spot and I lost it that's okay it's fine come back come back and do the work it's fine these are bumps you're gonna hit on the road you're not the only one everybody goes through it just be consistent show up come back you forget about things come back to the Academy that's why we're doing the Academy consistently every Wednesday because I know what it's like you deviate that's the nature of the mind I've done it I know it I know I know my own weaknesses I know my shortcomings I know where I get tempted and I go stray away it's okay it's the nature of the mind come back into the Academy or bring you back here or put you back there that's the goal that's why we're sannyasins that's why we are the lovers of the truth we're the monks on the path come back to your spiritual group whoever is your spiritual group wherever it is I'm not talking about me or here whomever you feel connected with you're working with go back go back to your community stay focused on your work until that community doesn't serve you then either you do it on your own or you go somewhere else but just stay on the path don't deviate keep doing your work because this stage we're in right now with what is happening it's very clear that we're close this global pandemic is a very very good sign that we're very close on our quantum leap into the fifth dimensional consciousness means right now more than ever you need to be attentive and sacrifice everything for awareness everything and do not compromise awareness for anything because all could be lost and you can't afford another thousand years of slavery you're about to free yourself so stay really focused do whatever you have to do if you gotta spend money spend money you have to put time put time you have to sit down and meditate meditate you have to go climb the mountain that's gonna get you there do it do what you have to do stay focused this is not a time to fool around we have fooled around enough it's a time to be very focused on awareness also uh, Amir again tells me I keep forgetting uh, we're small organization 
this we're happy that we're presenting the retreat to you if you feel like making donations we do accept donations and we really appreciate your help so if you feel like helping go ahead and do that we're very grateful to you because we do plan on providing more videos podcasts meditations free trainings whichever i can i will keep producing it so if you feel like helping we appreciate it in addition to that this is this for this year i'm offering a private one-on-one -on -one vip tailor-made program for those spiritual seekers are truly dedicated to their awakening so the program is about three months to five months long and we will meet you can contact me i'll have a we'll have a consultation appointment i will go through your needs and your blockages and the areas you're struggling with and i'll make a tailor-made program for you and walk you through it and help you to get over the hump so i don't guarantee this is going to be around for good it's going to be i will be doing it as long as i can do my foreign travel so it's a limited time that it's available but it's happening right now i'm very excited about it so if you feel inclined and your heart desires and you can do it just contact me my website is zaratustra.tv my email is info at zaratustra.tv so and all of our pages podcast youtube instagram and facebook our address is zaratustra 5d i look forward to seeing you tomorrow on our day seven and welcome you to join me go ahead and take a little bit time after this and just stay in silence before you engage with the world it's very important let this transmission to sink in we talked about some very deep stuff but it's not only the conversation it's the space in between what i say which is more powerful than what i say the silence in between the words is where the transmission is coming from so take your time after we're done and spend a little bit of time by yourself if you have to get engaged with the world just wait a little bit longer before you do that and if you can just take the time to be by yourself that i recommend highly sending you my love and light and thank you for joining me and i look forward to seeing you tomorrow namaste god bless